Hurling on Off The Ball With Board Gosh Energy Hurling, it's anyone's game all right, for one last time before the actual final happens, and I'm delighted to say good afternoon to Anthony Nash. Anthony, how are you? Great, Joe. How are you? What, what part of the world are you in? <laughs> Not Ireland. <laughs> I'm in Spain. I'm in Spain at the moment, yeah. Jetting, uh, jetting. Last day, though, coming All right. tomorrow. I was going to say, jetting back just in time to see this final. Exactly, yeah. Looking forward to it, no, to be honest. Um, I know we'll crack into it soon, but not going to be as, as uh, predictable as last year, I think. Uh my cousin's daughter is Anya Donegan, who was uh, momentarily leading the US Open recently, and our family WhatsApp group was absolutely lit. I can only imagine what the Nash family WhatsApp group is like in the build-up to an all Ireland final, where your cousin is uh, about to star and potentially be crowned as one of the greatest uh, hurlers, part of the greatest hurling team of all time. Yeah, to be honest, though, it's Anthem there during the week, right? Uh, um, I think I said this to you before, but I don't know. Every time I introduce some people, I always introduce them as the nice Nash. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he's a superstar. What he's done um, is phenomenal. Like Tommy Walsh, obviously, has done similar, where he started in one side of the field, ended up in the other. Um, and I think what Barry is doing for for himself and the family is huge. Uh, I also joked to you before that he's still not best defender in the house. <laughs> He's, um, his brother is a cornerback, and his father obviously played fullback for for Limerick as well, but. Yeah, he's um, hopefully. I can't be unbiased in this show today, Jordan. I hope people will understand it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hopefully he'll he'll have another one in his back pocket. When you've been thinking about the game, uh, it's natural for when you are biased to think about what the dangers are going to be. Mm. And uh, with the Skullcanny team, obviously, there's there's many different ones. For you, what's the overriding? Where does the the beginning start of the doubt that Limerick are going to win? It's, they're the one team in the country who can be guaranteed they'll work as hard as Limerick that's the one thing you're always guaranteed with Kilkenny um, just like so Owen Cody I think he's had an unbelievable season um, so what he's going to bring to the table will obviously be very important for Kilkenny but just do you know what last year it was a little bit more one sided I thought Kilkenny weren't as threatening as they are this year I just feel it's a little bit different this year I think they have a bit more confidence Um you know, beating Clare as well in the way to the final as well, which, like, I would have... I, I got wrong, obviously. Um, but I just think they look a little bit more dangerous. I think they're more complete, whatever it is about them. Maybe it's just the age of the group or something like that. Another year under the belt. But, um, look, Limerick are still favourites for me. Um, uh, but I still think that it's going to be a lot tighter. How, how relevant is last year's final? Is it really relevant? Is it not relevant at all? What, what has it got to do with this game, if anything? I thought I thought the semi final was more relevant. I thought Kilkenny and Clare going at it again was probably more relevant for me, especially the way that Clare had not performed. And then do you know what? Like even I had written off not written off Kilkenny, I always said that, you know, even I said to Will that time like that she's any could happen, but I just don't think the a final is a final. It doesn't matter who you're playing, to be honest. You want to wake up Monday morning all Ireland final or all Ireland champions. Um so for me it was more the semi final. But I just think that this team is a little bit more um do you know what? They're they're more ready. I, I as I said to you before, I still think that Limerick are definitely the favourites, but um, I still think that Kilkenny have have a lot more to offer. I know is it the fact that Cody, um, Adrian Mullen being back fit is huge. Obviously, that's massive for them as well. But they just seem to have uh, seem to have more of a balance this year. Yeah, I I, I I I don't know. Last year's game was so weird that. Mm. For whatever reason, Kilkenny were able to stay in the game when it looked like Limerick yeah. were rampant, and it was a bunch of frees that that Limerick gave away that kept Kilkenny in the game. And then Kilkenny suddenly were like, "Actually, we're still in this game," and looked really good. And then obviously Limerick reemerged as like, oh, "Hang on a second, we're we're Limerick. We're like potentially the greatest team of all time, so we're going to be grand." Yeah. But that kind of swing, if you're Limerick, you want to try and remove as much of that as possible. You you don't want to give Kilkenny the foothold in the game, but. It's so so easier said than done. Like, how do you stop the fouling in the first half that keeps Kilkenny in the game? Yeah, look, I suppose the refereeing thing is going to be huge. Um, but they're probably the two most physical teams in the country, and, and known for it over the last twenty years. No, nearly at this stage, like when when Shefflin and like Eddie Brennan all them were playing, like they were known as what Limerick are now, I suppose. So uh, Limerick seem to have brought that physicality. So refereeing will be huge. Um, do you know what? I I hope he left. It, I hope he leaves it go for the spectator, for the for the neutral, because it's going to be hot and heavy. Um, and you've two of the best free takers in the country as well. Also, 
on Sunday as well and what TJ Reid has done scoring wise in the last obviously him Stephen Hoggy we spoke about that before but for me for Limerick it's just play your game it's it, like it, the similarities like you and I have always spoken with the Dublin footballers right and Kilkenny hurlers and the Limerick hurlers have become the equivalent to those where Kilkenny have always said when back in their prime bring on whatever you want to do we'll take you on and Limerick have now become that so neither team are going to worry too much about what the other bring they just need to worry about their own performances and I think Limerick are probably the, just that step ahead the, the, I talked to Seamus Hickey during the week about the weight of history and uh, maybe the weight of history is actually the wrong way of looking at it it's just that over a long period of time other teams get closer to you because they see everything you have there's n- literally nothing new that you can bring unless there's a, a, a young player who comes onto the panel and helps with something or um, or whatever but generally all of the information that we'll ever want about Limerick has been shown to us over the last number of years and maybe that's one of the reasons why it's so difficult to do four in a row because everybody catches up with you eventually and it's not that you get overawed by the prospect of becoming the great team um, so it, does any of that stuff matter? The the fact that they are going for four in a row? They still have the best players. And, and you know what? Like, you can't train a donkey to win a derby. And when you have a prime horse, he has a chance of winning it. And that's it for me. They just seem to have players all over the field that can hurl. Um, like, when you look at the halfback in the last day, like, Jesus Christ, I, I spoke with the height of him, but I think you have Declan Hannon potentially coming back in, hopefully. They're just... They're just the best team in the country on paper. And if they perform, they win. And whether four in a row, five in a row, six in a row, it's on the day. And that's the way they're going to approach it with Caroline Corridor and with Kenark and all It's just another game of hurling. Um, and you know what? If you ask anybody around the country, even Kilkenny supporters, if Limerick perform to their best, they're going to win. That's it. Um, they're just the best team. And it might sound boring, like, but... That's unfortunately it, yeah. Well, we've been saying it all year. Um, the, the latest news is that the official uh, squad announcement has not included Declan Hannon. However, we don't yeah. know if he's been named as uh, one of the four potential players who can come in in the event that somebody was to drop out for whatever reason. So yeah. um, I'd say it's more likely than not that they won't have Hannon. Is that a significant swing towards Kilkenny or did they get enough in the semi final? to see actually you know what we're, we're capable of dealing we'd love to have them but if you're going to win four in a row or five in a row or five out of six or whatever it is then there are going to be times when you're missing your best players we had it last year with Keane Lynch so we know we can do it and we did it in the semi-final too um, that'll be their attitude but is it correct do you think? Uh, I don't think another team in the country could survive bar Limerick um, like you've got Kyle Hayes you've got obviously Grode Hagerty and you've got Damon Burns in like it's just <laughs> like Give me a team that wouldn't love that halfback line. <laughs> I'd hate to be playing against them consistently anyway. Um, but yeah, like Declan Hand's huge loss to anyone. It, listen, uh, he is... He's their silent leader. I've always said that. He seems to be just so good at what he does. When the team seems to be going to get... Uh, when things seem to be going against him, he pops up with that 70-yard strike over the bar. Um, but I still think they can survive with or without him. It'll be interesting to see if whether he tags out. In fairness to John, I've always said this. I don't think he puts out bogey teams that often. Um... But if he's there or not, I, obviously he's a loss, but not a detrimental loss. As in, I just still think they have enough. Like they're just like if you go through their team. Like you're talking about Keen Lynch last year, Sean Finn this year, now Declan Hannon, and they still have enough to win. Like which is scary, um, you know. But yeah, I think they'll be okay without him. It was Sarah Donovan, I think, who, who talked to us first about uh, the John Kiley interview that. Um, Ashley O'Reilly did with him where he was like I think we got enough from, from Will O'Donoghue in the semi-final and mm-hmm. he'll come on for that game which was kind of the really the cat's out of the bag there that he's going to end up yeah. more than likely playing centre-back in the final um, yeah. which means Keane Lynch goes back into midfield and in a way if, if Keane Lynch is trying to get back to the form that we know he's capable of that actual extra little bit of space uh, running onto the ball um, might be what he needed to get back to the level that we know he's capable of Look, as a neutral, everyone wants to see Keane playing his best. Um, and it's, again, another player that has played in two or three different positions that has just electrified the championship. But, like, Will O'Donoghue is probably the perfect player to manage. I'd say if you told him to go back in fullback or even into goal, he'd do the job. Do you know what I mean? He's just a... He's a superstar that way. Um, but, yeah, look, I, again, look, I just... I just think they have enough. I just think they have too much for, for any other team in the country at the moment. I know they went through Munster and people were questioning him and all that kind of stuff, but 
I just think up front, especially, they seem to have a lot. Like you have the likes of like Reedy, who's had to come into the form of his life, and you have Cahill O'Neill and coming in from the bench himself, needed. Um, but just yeah, they're just they're just too hot and heavy. Is there anything on the day or anything that can happen here? Are we like if you're Kilkenny, do you need to somehow have somebody from Limerick get sent off? Is that like, or can they actually yeah, beat them? You know. I think Owen Cody is going to be key here. I think like if if Owen Cody has the day which he can do, um, he seems to become the new superstar. Kilkenny hurling, obviously, like you know, Adrian Mullen got out to midfield, but uh, like it, it sounds like I'm making this very one sided. I'm not. I still think that Kilkenny have a chance. I just think that um, it, it would take like the likes of Aaron Galan or Seamus Flanagan to have a very bad day. Uh, like you, you go through the you go through that Limerick team, and they have so many players that can do damage. Um, and then I'm weighing on Owen Cody or a Walter Walsh to come on and have an impact or whatever like you know um, like TJ Reid obviously is free taking but oh, I just I just don't see it like and it's not that it's going to be a kind of a one sided affair or anything like that but I just still think Limerick have too much uh, Kilkenny needs to score goals that's it they need to get goals potentially early um, which isn't uh, you know a, a thing that won't happen but I think they need two or three goals probably three to be honest if they're to win this final Is there anything from a shape perspective or a, a puck out setup that Kilkenny can do that Limerick won't have seen across all the games already that they've played um, So I did an article this week with Fox 2 about um, like the two goalkeepers and I was saying that like Owen Murphy for me is more the extravagant goalkeeper that pulls off the point blank save Nicky Quaid is more the better check so if I was Nicky Quaid looking down the field, I don't think it matters what shape they have when you have the size of half forward than you have or the, the intensity and the work rate up front. So I think Kilkenny aren't going to change. I think they're just going to have it, like breaks. It, it's old fashioned. It's, you know, it's it sounds silly, but like breaks are going to be huge. Whoever obviously wins the most breaks has the most possession and stuff. And like when you have both forward lanes as dangerous as they are, it's potentially who has the most possession. Um, but pockets wise, I think both teams are going to be simplistic, go along, hopefully win it. Uh, which will obviously bring a bit of excitement into it as well but no I don't, I don't think Kenny will change too much to be honest I think it's both, both managers are going to be just look this is what we're going to do the, the only thing you could look at potentially is is a low line centre back with maybe you know for Kilkenny but you're giving Limerick Barry Nash in as a, as a sweeper in as well and I don't think that's something you want to do so that's the thing it's like um, you yeah. try one thing yeah. they've, they've thought of your potential plans and uh, fire away lads you, you do that and we'll beat you with the, the short puck out instead and that's why Limerick are so good I know people are probably bored of who was talking about their brilliance but that's why they're so good because like that Dublin football team bring it on any way you want and we'll take you on and I think Limerick holders are the same right now they're like uh you give us a sweeper, we're probably the best sweeper in the country. Don't give us a sweeper, and we have six and six with a, a half hour and crashing into midfield. Um, but again, like, it, and I, I'm annoying myself here by saying this, like, it sounds like I'm making this very one sided. I don't think it will be. I really think Kilkenny are better than last year. Um, I just think they just need goals. They need to get goals uh, to to keep this game, you know, uh, you know, for them to have an opportunity to win. And on that, right? So, as a team who you know you need to get to 224 or 320 mm. or maybe 323 if you want to have a chance of winning how do you start uh, creating those chances in such a number that some of them are going to go in like because it, it's well and good to say we need goals but how do you actually manufacture them how do you create the shape and the space to do that you just said it's space yeah it's like it's trying to get the like so like I don't know who's going to be on on Cody. Will it be Dan Morrissey or will it be uh, my case, whoever like that? But you really want him one on one. That's the only hope you have as Kilkenny, I think, is that. No, TJ Reid, the edge of the square for a while, mightn't do any harm either because obviously his aerial ability is so good and strong. Um, and like, I, Kilkenny people seem to get frustrated, but I've huge time for Walter Walsh. I, I think he's an absolute huge asset to any team. It's just he's such an awkward hurler, but he's so effective. So the likes of him coming in too, but it's, it's creating that space. It's, you know, like. Uh, it's like I spoke about this before when my, one of my first articles actually was about chess was about the centre back and the centre forward you're trying to get if Will I don't get the centre back out the field get the half back line out the field and that's what Limerick are brilliant at they'll say look let your half forward line go out we're going to hold our half back line we're going to control the space inside here but it's trying to get that one and one inside um, you know and and then our twos and twos basically and 
you know, just creating those opportunities. But deliveries from midfield is going to be huge too. Um, I just think the, I just think he's going to be key to it on code. I think he's going to be key to the key to the game the next day. Um, he's had such a great season. He's had such uh, you know he's such a good hurler too. But for me, it's just trying to get as many one on ones inside as you can. Uh, what would I do? Try and get your shooting half forwards out to midfield. Get them on the ball for the first fifty minutes. Try and get up as many points as you can, and then hopefully they'll draw out another little bit. But and then after that, just try and get balls in deep. So it's uh, do one thing to set something up a little bit later on, and that's it. Like like. Like, puck out the right? We just go short to go long, if you get me. We wanted to go short because we wanted the team to draw back up to us so we could have the space up the field later on in the game, you know? Um, and that's what Limerick wants to do. That's what Kikini wants to do. So you want to go short, make them effective enough for another manager to go, oh, oh, this is hurting us. We need to push up the field. So we always spoke about that, like that you want to do one thing, as you said, to set up the other. So you want to get your half forward scoring from distance. So therefore, their half back line will follow, and then the inside space will create. Um, again, did, to, did I lose it? Gotcha. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I totally yeah. understand it. I, and, and to be honest, it, this is why I actually feel like I would give Kilkenny way more of a chance to win this year. Mm. Uh, it seems like they're more willing to do slightly different things over the course of the match than they would have been. Like I, I think we completely underrate Brian Cody's tactical ability over the years um, but it does feel as if the team has been slowly getting to a point where they're capable of playing a game plan that is more sophisticated than the one that they had last year and this doesn't make any sense like last year they absolutely annihilated Clare in the semi-final with an incredible performance this year Clare put in a really good performance and Kilkenny still came through it and I would actually argue that they're in better stead because of this year's victory in the semi than they were last year and they, they really rattled Clare or Limerick in the second half but I guess the point I'm making is that um, under Derek Ling it feels uh, like and I'm a very casual observer of this because Seamus Dickers like they're the same team there's not that significant to change he, he didn't think that he thought Ling's uh, Kilkenny is very similar to Cody's Kilkenny but it just feels like and maybe this is all that matters the perception is that they can do different things and if you think yeah, they're going to do exactly. different things you might respond to that that's it that's it I think I, like, I actually think they are a little bit different <laughs> listen Brian Cody I just love it like it was portrayed in Jimmy Barry Murphy as well that we didn't do tactics under Jimmy or Brian Cody. Of course they did. Brian Cody had, was probably one of the first managers to draw his half forward and into the middle of the field. You know, he was he was like, I suppose he might have played up to two. Of course they, they had tactics. They always made it hard for you to do puck outs. I always found him difficult when I first came on the scene. Um, but the thing with Ling, I just think he's allowing him to play that little bit darker at times. That's all. Um, and as you said, maybe it's just perception. I don't know. But they do seem to be different, and I think that um, the players seem to be feeling that way too. If you get me, like I really think that it's in fairness to him, he's continued what what Brian Cody has done. Like a manager could have come in there and thrown the baby out with the bathwater and, and changed everything up. While there's a lot of similarities, I do think they have that little bit more freedom to to do what they want. And uh, I think every other team in the country has kind of looked at it and kind of thought that too. But yeah, still, Kilkenny, they still have the most important things: hard work, effort honesty um, and you know what they do go along they need to go along too so there's still similarities but I do feel that there is a slight slight more um, encouragement to try different things yeah and w- as a result of that you can be sure that Limerick are thinking okay we'll, we need to be aware of this uh, mm-hmm. not, that, not that we're going to change fundamentally but that there'll be periods or passages of the game where they do something slightly different and that, that could actually be the win of the game from Limerick's perspective they might find that the matchup ends up working to their advantage in a way that uh, it wasn't predicted by Kilkenny and lo and behold it's a disaster from a Kilkenny perspective but uh, that, the reason why we just given a bit more op- opportunity this year is that I feel like they're going to get more of their better players on the ball more often and uh, that takes us into the realms of um, scoring accuracy and, and percentages and, and uh, it sounds like it could be a classic yeah that's a look scoring accuracy is going to be huge like Kilkenny every t- it's like any team like when you're playing against Man United at their prime or when it, you need to take your chances that's it like Kilkenny do need to take their chances even from long distance and they have the ability to do so um, but like I suppose minimising wide like do you know what it's as simple as this like it's boring right you need to minimise your wides take your chances and score goals that's it I'm going to be the Kilkenny manager next year. <laughs> like it's you know it's 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 that simple, but it's that difficult at the same time because um, 
they do need to take all their chances because Limerick will. I think the, I said it earlier in the year to you, the further this team went into the championship, the worse teams are going to feel. And I think that in order to final with Limerick, you need to have the best performance against them. Uh, so let's just briefly talk about where they would be in the pantheon of all-time great teams. It's not just a four in a row. It's uh, five out of six. It's like very special. They're in the conversation with any other team ever. Uh, I hate to be on the team that started their victories <laughs> in the <laughs> extra time. Um, to me, I, I think they're the best. Um, and that's, I know people might listen in and say, oh, your cousin's on the team and stuff like that. But like that, that Kilkenny team and the Cork team, they battled out against each other so much, you know. Um, and I like when I first joined that Cork panel, it was just like I was in awe of those players. And they still are, for me, one of the greatest in Kilkenny, obviously. But... I just think what they've done, like losing the players they've lost and still winning all Ireland's, like losing the hurler of the year and still winning in all Ireland is, you know, is huge. Um, so for me right now, you'd love to go back in a PlayStation game with two teams against each other. But for me, for me, they're the best. Win or lose on Sunday. Um, they just seem to be, you know, like, as I said to you, whatever teams throw at them, this year people are writing them off all year even I know John Coyley came out and said it and stuff like that, like you're losing Sean Finn, potentially one of the best defenders in, in Ireland. Of, you know in the last how long um, and they're still just driving on uh, so yeah oh, they're probably just that, that pick ahead of that team yeah uh, Sean you agree o, or disagree uh, I think that they have to win at the weekend to be honest and I do think that okay. like that group uh, the Kilkenny team from the, the noughties uh, this current Kilkenny team have the opportunity to become absolute all-time legends in Kilkenny by stopping <laughs> four in a row it's like yeah yeah I get you yeah, you know yeah. those parties would be good parties where yeah. all of a sudden you can walk into a room that has Henry and Jackie and JJ and go oh lads look we stopped we stopped the Limerick team from beating you so we're actually just as important in Kilkenny hurling history as you guys are thanks very much yeah. and it's uh, champagne and cigars all around like the 72 Dolphins but for, but, but for me like it's yeah. but for me it's like it depends who you like. So you could talk to Kilkenny people, obviously, or neutrals and stuff. But it's, like this Limerick team have beaten so many teams in different ways. Like you know, winning All Ireland last year, winning every team. Do you know what I mean? Like I just thought for me was, yeah. And as I said, unfortunately, being a player on the team that they started their run with was never a nice feeling and stuff like that. But yeah, I just think they're just a, that pip ahead, just small bit, not much. Like, but um, yeah, just just slightly. We have uh, a long, dark winter ahead of us to um, compare and yeah, contrast. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. did just want to ask you about Sean O'Gahalpin. He was in studio with Joe Malloy during the week. Everybody should check that out mm. on the OTBGA podcast feed. Um, I, uh, the, Joe had a great quote about Henry Shefflin, which uh, Sean O'Gah ended up talking about his mum. But Shefflin was like, he was the toughest defender that he had marked. And I was like, because you never really hear Sean O'Gah in those team of the decade teams because that Kilkenny team had so many great players but like have we forgotten how good a hurler he was yeah he was see the thing about Sean Og I suppose what took away from him as in his hurling was that he was always so fit you know what I mean his physique always looked so good and he was always so you all train so well but like Sean Og was like I, I mentioned Will I don't know who they're earlier about being a manager's dream Sean Og was the manager's dream he would have done whatever whatever he needed to do for the team he was actually himself and Brian Corker were the, were the two first people to shake my hand when I joined the panel. You know, I remember in Castle Martyr, it was a wet, dreary night, like in the back pitch, and the two boys came up and shook my hand, and I was like, in gobsmacked, right? And uh, it was funny, like one of my my first roommate in Dublin was Sean Og too, and uh, I was afraid to sleep in case I snored. I was just <laughs> like, do not wake this guy. You know, he's playing a huge game tomorrow. I don't know how we got paired up together, but. Um, very nice guy but I, I always thought that his fitness which was a compliment to him like he was always in great shape was you know took away from what he could do as a hurler like Sean was class but he did the simple things like he'd win the ball and give it off to other people you know Ray Keane always said uh, win the ball and give it to the better player Sean was that kind of guy he wanted to just get the ball do the simple things right and uh, a super team player and do you know what I don't think as many of his teammates would have ever given out about him um yeah, and I, I, do you know what I thought retired young, as in like I know Dennis got rid of him, like but Sean Og was a guy that could have kept going for an eternity, uh, you know. Um, but brilliant player, but well, well, a superstar. And always, do you know what I always found well was like Corn beside him would catch the ball, and Sean Og used to get the ball to ground, you know that kind of way. Just yeah. just kept it so basic, like in himself and Dan Shannon used to great battles in as well. But 
just yeah, he was so physical, so strong, and I, I agree with you. I think he should have been, he should be up there, um, on top of being such a nice guy too. Our uh, homework for the winter can not just be comparing Limerick and Kilkenny, but also. Pick what, the team. <laughs> well, I, I was, I was going to open an entirely different can of worms. What would have happened if the strike hadn't happened? How good would that Cork team? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And that Cork Kilkenny rivalry have been? Because that, for me, it's the one of the great lost things in Irish sport where, yeah. you know, it could have been a five, seven year rivalry. Like that Cork team. They were special. They were a special group of people, and I, I, and, and you know what? That did hurt them. Uh, like I, I often speak about it, like to the lads about it. Like it did hurt them because you lost a lot of players in their prime. Um, you know, a year or two and stuff like that. It was just a pity the way it went. Um, you know, because as I said to you, like when I first came into that team, like I remember, like Munster Rugby used to be looking at our training. Our math football was looking at our training and stuff like that. That we had, like when I say sorry, not not we. They had developed the most professional setup I've ever been involved in, um, and just lost it, uh, which is a pity. Like because, you know, when you look at those superstars who were still ready to go for another couple of years and stuff, um, you know. But yeah, definitely, I, I, I personally feel lost. Cork lost a couple of years. Yeah. Well, like the innovation of the short puckouts, so controversial, mm. and now like no team in the country doesn't have a short puckout strategy because. Uh, you know, it's that wild thing that everybody goes, yeah, you can't do that. And it's like, oh, of course we're going to do that because it's, it's plainly obvious. But to, yeah. I think people forget about that in a way. And look, there's been loads of other innovations. So it's not like they were the only team innovating, but they were innovating against one of the all time great teams and therefore being driven by. Anyway, sure, look, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. No, no, you're right. No, 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 I agree. I actually agree with you. I think we'll enjoy that sometime. Um, like, I actually have spoke about this a lot. Like, Don Logue and I obviously were competing I wouldn't say competing because he was always ahead of me but like like I was in the 2005 all Ireland final against Galway like and they went long all of a sudden and it just spooked Galway you know what I mean but like the way they thought about things the way they did things was just you know it, it was incredible like um, but it was a group of players that were mentally and mentally strong enough and confident in their own games to do those things you know um, and that's what I got a taste of when I first joined uh, I agree with you. I think that team probably didn't get the don't get the credit because of, of what happened. But be another another show, Joe. Yeah, looking forward to it already. <laughs> Anthony, safe home. Thanks a million for joining us oh, today. Thanks, Will. Yeah, um, great stuff. See you Sunday. It's Anthony Nash. There, a reminder: hurling it's anyone's game. Off the ball has teamed up with senior hurling championship sponsors Board Gosh Energy to uncover stories highlighting the positive impact that hurling has had on people's lives. For full competition details please visit borggoshenergy.ie forward slash BGE GAA and we do have some highlights coming from our roadshow in the Borggosh Energy Theatre last night it has been a spectacular night of hurling chat uh, for everybody who was there they absolutely had a fantastic time and we'll play some of that a little bit later on Hurling on Off The Ball with Borggosh Energy Hurling it's anyone's game